Are uh, this is Justice Society of Superheroes number twenty seven, written and drawn by Jerry Ordinary. This is a two parter that I thought I would cover. It's got a lot of Infinity stuff in it and Stirfy Squadron. Uh, we start off with a splash page of the Infinity actually. Uh, really great seeing these characters again. Uh, these three in particular almost never appear anymore. But our scene here is with the Pratt and Mr. Bean. They're reflecting on the good hard days. A uh, good little scene. Uh, the Pratt, by the way, it used to be this one, Hyperion. Uh, it's a nice opening bit, but the Pratt, he gets called away on Justice Society of Superheroes business. Because their headquarters has been surrounded with Shadow. Obsidian Man, he has blocked off their base with his powers. And some of the members are still inside. Uh, these ones here, Black Panther, uh, Green Lanterns, the original one, John Scott. Uh, Flask, the one with the funny hat. And this one is Flask Girl. Uh, Obsidian Man, he has locked down their base because he has sensed an evil presence coming to cause them danger. And outside, the Pratt and the other members, they're trying to work out how to get in. And then this odd bloke, he passes out. And Mr. Terrificals is there and he uses his big brain to determine that this odd bloke, he has got like an evil spirit in him. So then Stars Girl, she tries to use her Stars Stick to extract it. But they didn't realise the spirit actually takes over Stars Girl. And the hard bloke, he just like dies anyway because the spirit was the only thing keeping them walking. Uh, this, is, this is a good story, I think. I think it was a fill-in even. Uh, so then Stars Girl... Now that she is housing this evil spirit, she's able to use her star stick to make the shadows spread and get inside. And Mr. Terrificals, with his big brain, he's able to guess she is being controlled straight away. Uh, Mr. Terrificals, uh, this version of the character, he is he's a really good character. Much better than the rubbish white version. Uh, then inside the headquarters, we have got Green Lanterns, John Scott. He realises that his Green Lanterns ring. It could help illuminate stuff and push back some more of Obsidian Man's shadows. And it's like an internal dilemma for him because Obsidian Man is his son. His slightly vulnerable son who he hasn't always been there for. And he doesn't really want to do this, but... Well, he has to do it. Some really strong character stuff there from Jerry Ordinary. Uh, then we have got the rest of the team outside. We got the Pratt. We got Mr. Terrificals. We got Minuteman. They're trying to stop Stars Girl from from doing stuff. Uh, also, Supergirl. Uh, I said the same thing last time. I reviewed an issue from this period of the book. There's like, there's like eighteen members of the team. Far too many to keep track of. And Supergirl, she doesn't really do much in this issue. So the two separate parts of the team, they convene after pushing Obsidian Man back. And then the evil spirit, it emerges and straight away teleports uh, Green Lanterns, Black Panther, Flask Girl and Minute Man. And the Flask, he teleports them all away. And Obsidian Man, he's like... See, I, I told you so. And this comic is probably the most flattering thing Obsidian Man has had to do since, like, the 90s. Uh, and the spirit, it seemingly sends these five members of the Justice Society of Superheroes back in time to Hiroshima. And we find out that the spirit, it's an odd stir -fry squadron buddy who uh, died in the atomic bombing. And now he blames the superheroes for it. And he wants revenge against the Justice Society of Superheroes. Kaboom! That is the big atom bomb ganning off, doing an explosion and killing 145,000 Japanese lives. 
which is the exact sort of fun, light-hearted antics I want from a superhero comic. Uh, then the members, the ones left behind, they're trying to cotton on to what is happening, and, oh shit, I forgot, I forgot stupid judo mistress, she's, she's rubbish, uh, and Pratt's son, that's him behind her, uh, and there's a red tornado. Too many characters. I didn't normally do this, but uh, for me, if I was doing a Justice Society of Superheroes book, uh, I would have uh, Green Lanterns, John Scott, uh, The Flask, the one with a funny hat, uh, Black Panther, Doctor Fates, uh, Stephen Hawkman and Orkin Girl, uh, Supergirl, Obsidian Man, Pratt, and Mockingbird, Chelsea Kane. And then you have a spin-off like Infinite Tears where you have Stars Girl leading and you have like all the young ones on that team like Red Tornado and <laughs> Judo Mistress if you want. I don't normally do stuff like that because it's awfully close to fan fiction territory. But they summon the Spectre to help out and as you can imagine this excites me as the Spectre is my favourite DC character. To be continued. Justice Society of Superheroes number 27 by Jerry Ordinary is a comic and I rate it 7 thumbs up.